الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبین محمد وعلیٰ علی و صحبہ وسلم اما بعد حبت فلاح السلام علیکم رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ حیاکم اللہ ویلکم بیک ٹو آر اسٹڈی آف عقیدہ اینڈ توحید اینڈ وی لیفٹ آف آن پیج ففٹی ایٹ ان دا ٹریٹیز اینڈ وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ توحید الہیہ دی توحید اٹس آلسو نون از توحید علی بادہ میننگ دا توحید آف ورشپ میننگ ہاؤ وی ایکچولائز مانوتھیزم by practicing, by supplicating to Allah, by praying to Allah, by making Hajj to Allah and all the actions and the actions in our heart and the actions and the statements in our tongue that are acts of worship, how we direct them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So the Shaykh <coughs> left off, we left off <coughs> in the verse where, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitabihi al mubin Say, where is the earth and whosoever is therein? If you know, they will say, it is a loss. Say, will you not then remember? Say, who is the Lord of the seven heavens and the Lord of the great throne? They will say, Allah. Say, will you not then fear Allah? Say, in whose hand is the sovereignty of everything? And he protects all while against whom there is no protector and they will say it is a law say how then are you deceived and turn away from the truth so again this shows us how the lordship of Allah should therefore when we recognize these things and even the pagan Arabs the pagans they acknowledge this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, was the Lord of everything and the creator of everything but yet at the same time they didn't then turn and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using this type of argumentation that shows us that when we are giving da'wah that's an excellent lesson for us if we want to know about the best way to call people to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it isn't through comparative religion and comparative studies and and all of these other things, and we're not necessarily negating those ways of, for example, those people who discredit the Bible, discredit the Hindu text, or what have you. That is a, a type of dawa. But the most effective is using the way of the Quran and using the way of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, which was the Quran. Then uh, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is also showing the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that emanates from Rububiyyah uh, that, the, that the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should then in, there in turn cause you to worship him alone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَذَلِكَمْ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ خَالِكُمْ خَالِكُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ فَعْبُدُوهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says خَالِكُ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, such is Allah your Lord. There is no God that has the right to be worshipped except Him, the creator of all things. So worship Him and Him alone. Again, this shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His argument in uh, that we should convey to mankind is that, hey, look at this creation know that there's a lord of it we can agree to that right right uh then why don't you then therefore worship the creator of the heavens and earth alone why do you stop with jesus why do you stop with brahma or whoever you know why do you stop why do you use the bhagavad gita why do you use all these books and so forth that illustrate many gods and 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 show shirk and polytheistic beliefs and 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 call people to that why isn't it that you don't follow Eliza with Joe, the one who's the only one worthy of worship? So he argued his right to worship with his oneness in Rububiyyah. It was for the purpose of Tawheed al Uluhiyah that created all that he created all of creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa ma al wa li I've not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. Uh, the meaning of worshiping me is that they take him as their only object of worship alone and so you can read the rest of those statements after that and, and then also he mentions another verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and if you ask them who created them they will surely say Allah 
And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, and indeed if you ask them who has created the heavens and the earth, they will say the Almighty, the All-Knower created them. So these are arguments in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is establishing his lordship and that, that it necessitates that you then worship him and him alone. So it's an affirmation. He's calling uh, the, the creation to affirm his lordship and then therefore to affirm his tawheed al uluhiyah meaning that he is the only one who is, has the right to be worshipped. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al -Kareem, Say, who provides for you from the sky and from the earth? Or who owns hearing and sight? And who, who brings the living from the dead? And who brings out the dead from the living? And who disposes the affairs? They will say Allah. So they acknowledge. So it shows that a lot of the, the pagans, they acknowledged this, uh, the, the, uh, the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then on page 63, Ahabat Tafillah, Imam Fuzan, he goes on to ex the explanation of the meaning of Tawheed al uluhiyah You know, what, how do we uh, uh, really understand this concept? So an explanation of the meaning of Tawheed al uluhiyah uh, and that it is the theme in the invitation of the messengers. This is very important because here, Imam Fuzan is, is positing the very important uh, theme which is in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is that all the prophets and messengers alayhim after salatu wasalam they all called to tawheed they all called to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this monotheism they all called to the worship of Allah alone that worship that that supplicating, supplication should be only to Allah, that prayer should only be Allah, to sacrifice animals should only be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your hajj, your pilgrimage, everything should only be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it's not to the dead saints, and it's not to other prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, nor is it to our elders, nor is it to our, 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 our figureheads, nor is it to our leaders, nor to the leaders of our tribes, nor is it to our heritage, nor is it to nationalism, but really the call and the and the call that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created us to worship Him and Him alone, as we said, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. Also, the Shaykh brings a very another important ayah which is going to illustrate this point exactly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And verily we have sent every uh, among every ummah, every nation, a messenger, proclaiming worship Allah alone and avoid Tagut, you know, any false deities, anything else, you do not want to worship anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to do everything uh, possible to avoid any polytheistic practices. That's why we warn so sternly against people who say that it's only a sin, it's only some disobedience if you supplicate other than Allah. This is a great evil and a great munkar, which is a wasila. It is a means to spreading shirk and kufr. Wa'iyadim billah, wa'iyakum min dhalik. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we did not send any messenger before you, <clears throat> uh, but we inspired him saying, La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illa ana. There is no God worthy of worship except me. So worship me. This is what Allah, your Lord said. The one who we, we pray to five times a day. He subhanahu wa ta'ala said this in the Quran. Also, every messenger begins his invitation to his people by commanding them to Tawheed al uluhiyah to the, to the worship of Allah alone. Every messenger uh, uh, was sent with this, to, was sent to their particular people. And the Prophet sallallahu was sent to all mankind, but still, he began his call with his people. He didn't just travel across the earth and then start uh, calling people uh, who don't understand his language, don't understand his culture, don't understand, no. But he began right around him with his da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the call to Uluhiyah. As Nuh, Noah, alayhi salatu wasalam, he uh, called his people. Uh, he said, oh my people, worship Allah. You have no other uh, God but him. There's no one else worthy of worship but him. Ya qawmi ya'budullah ma lakum min ilahin ghayri What? Who do you have? You don't even have another God other than Him. And here we see 
how we understand this in light of other Quranic evidences is that not meaning that people don't take other false gods, trees, for example, branches, and you know, whatever else they take, but rather there Allah is the only God worthy of worship. He's the only true huwa mustahik lil ibadah. He is truly the only one worthy of worship. Also, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was sent with his people. And remember Ibrahim, when he said to his people, worship Allah alone and fear him. And similarly, <coughs> we revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, say, O Muhammad, verily I am commanded to worship Allah alone by obeying him and doing righteous deeds sincerely for Allah's sake. So that the Prophet والسلام, himself was also sent to his people and he was sent with the message to call them to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That goes back to the first verse we said, And we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid false deities. Ahabatifillah. Then also Imam Fozan, he mentions the statement of the Prophet والسلام, where he said, وسلم, I've been commanded to fight mankind till they testify that none has the right to be worshipped besides Allah and that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. Also, Ahabatifillah, moving on to the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al kareem fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah wa staghfir li dhimbik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al mubin. So no. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us with knowledge. I'lam, fa'lam, know, therefore know uh, that none has a right to be worshipped except Allah and ask forgiveness for your sins. Lil mu'mineen wa lil mu'minat. Ask forgiveness for the believing men and the believing women. So there are so many benefits, but this is not the time to explain and go into depth all the nasus, but this is to present this argument. And that's why I'm going to ask you to continue to read the next statements on your own. And we're going to uh, and, and move on to some of the other uh, verses and so forth that show the sinfulness and the wickedness of committing shirk and why we have to avoid it, why it's, a pro why it's pro prohibited. And so here, this is just establishing the importance of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And then Imam Fozan, he moves on, and this is on page 66, and he starts talking about shirk, which is the opposite of tohi, polytheism. And we talked a little bit about it prior in this other couple of sittings. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al kareem inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrik bi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily Allah forgives not that, that that partner should be set up with him in worship. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he does not forgive people who commit shirk. So how is it you could call to shirk? How is it you could even play with shirk? How can you even say that, for example, supplicating to other than Allah is not shirk? Why would you even play on the fence? Why would you even dig into issues that are not worth digging into, that the Quran itself refutes you from uh, so many different ways? This is evil. This is sickness. This is, uh, you know, malicious. This is whack so this is horrendous this is deplorable why because you're calling you're you're encouraging the call and the worship to other than Allah Azza wa Jal. and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Fi kitab al -kareem. this is also showing us how shirk is deplorable Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says but if they had joined and worship others with Allah all that they used to do would have been of no benefit to them so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys all when people commit the major shirk that shirk that takes you out of the fold of Islam. And they do it either knowingly or they do it, uh, they do it and it wasn't just a simple, it wasn't a mistake and it wasn't a slip of the tongue or something like this, but they, they do this and they die upon the major shirk. This takes them out of the fold of Islam and all of their good deeds, all the salat, all the zakat, all the hajj, all the sum, all the this, all the that, all the good deeds, all the smiles, all the uh, greetings, all the the, 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 the muhabba, the love they showed for the believers and so forth, it will be like dust in the wind. وَعِيَادٌ بِاللَّهِ وَإِيَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَلَكُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Kitab al -Kareem, If you join others in worship with Allah, then surely all of your deeds will be in vain and you will certainly be of, amongst the losers. So if you want to lose and if you want your deeds to be wasted, commit shirk. 
من ذلك. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم واعبد الله ولا تشركوا به شيئا. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says and worship Allah alone and do not uh, associate uh, uh, partners with Allah. This shows us here in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which in many of the verses in the Quran, you see that Allah, He, uh, the, the, what they refer to in, in Arabic uh, as a nafi wa ithbat, you know, the negation and the affirmation. So here, what, when we look at this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa'budullah. He, he, uh, he, um, he orders you, He commands you to worship Allah alone. Wa'budullah. If we stop there, that's an affirmation. That's a command. And then he prohibits in the same verse. Wala. He's negating something here. Wala tushriku bihishayin. And do not associate partners with him. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed tawheed and he negated shirk. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al-kareem, Wa qadha rabbuka ala ta'budu illa iyahu wa bil walidayni asana. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and your Lord has decreed that you worship none but him alone and that you are dutiful to your parents, showing that that's an act of worship uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're obedient and good and dutiful to your parents. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabi al-mubin, say, and he's addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa come, I will recite to you what your Lord has prohibited you from. Join not anything in worship with him. Be good and dutiful to your parents. So we see throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning, along with Tawheed, along with worshiping him and him alone, that one of the ways you can actualize that and do an excellent deed of ibadah, which is a good deed in and of itself, and it's a deed which pleases Allah, and it's a type of ibadah, and Allah puts it heavy on your scale, scale of good deeds because he commands you to worship him and him alone and at the same time he uh, orders you to be good to your parents and he prohibits you from shirk he prohibits you from uh, polytheism then imam fulzan he moves on <coughs> in uh, on page uh, 69 i believe page 69 he begins to talk about the explanation of the meaning of the shahadatain you know the the testimony of faith that's two testimonies. That is what is referred to as the shahadatain. Because the first shahada is that you bear witness that there's no God worthy of worship except the law. And that the second testimony of faith which enters you into the fold of Islam is that you bear witness that Muhammad is the last prophet and messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you need that shahadatain to enter into Islam. And that shahadatain has so many implications and meanings. Imam Fulzan, he goes on to say, he says, the meaning of shahadatain, the two testifications, meaning of the testification of la ilaha illallah, is to believe and affirm that none deserves worship but Allah, to be committed to it and acting according to it. La ilaha illallah is a negation of the right of worship to anything except Allah. While ilaha but Allah uh, is an affirmation of the sole right of worship uh, of Allah alone. The summation of the statement, none deserves worship in truth but Allah. One should not interpret it to mean there is no God but Allah. So we should not, and Imam Fuzan details this, I believe in this book as well in other texts of his, of why you should not explain it as no God, as that there is no God except Allah. Because there are a lot of false gods that people worship. People worship trees. People worship the sun, it just poked through. Wow, it's beautiful. Uh, and, and and the moon, people worship all those things. Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, layla wa nahara wa shamsu wal qamar la tasilu li shams wa la lil qamar." So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, <clears throat> uh, and from His signs is the uh, min ayati layla wa nahara is the day, uh, is the night and the day, and the sun, and the moon. And He says, "Do not throw straight to the sun nor the moon, but rather, wa shiru lillahi." Uh, prostrate to Allah who created them if it is him you truly worship so that shows us right there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is affirming his worship he's negating false worship of other false gods because people do worship if you look at some anim uh, uh, religions that practice animism 
where they worship things in the creation. They work, worship nature, for example. There are people who worship nature. They say, whoa, we're in Mother Nature and she's really favoring us today. And, so, and I'm not just talking about those light statements, but I'm talking about there are people actually worship it. You know, there are many cultures, indigenous cultures around the world that uh, practice some sort of animism where they worship the nature, they worship, and they worship the trees, the spirit of the trees, the gods of the trees, this and that and the other, the sun and the moon, fire worshipers, all of this is shirk. All of this is uh, disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is polytheism. And Allah wants you to worship him and him alone. So it's very important to know and understand that in the concept of Tawheed. Imam Fuzan, he goes on to explain some other uh, ideologies and you can read that on your own instead of uh, going extensively into that because we want this to be digestible. Uh, you, you know, having embraced Islam newly, we don't want to go, you, you want to keep as simple as possible and gain benefit from the text that you understand. We're not going to give you every single detail. Some of those things you can read about and if you have questions, you can come back. But let's go to some of the important things that Imam Bozan highlights here. He says, uh, he, he mentioned some of the false meanings of La ilaha illallah that some of the people bring forth and some of the political, uh, political ideologies that are behind some of them as well as other things. And so you can go to that. So he goes to the, to the pillars of the Shahadatain. I think this is important. We go to the pillars of the Shahadatain, and this is on page 70. He says, La ilaha illallah has two pillars, negation and affirmation, as we mentioned. The first pillar is negation. La ilaha, there's no God worthy of worship. So that's a negation. You're negating false gods. Illallah is an affirmation. You're affirming that Allah alone is the only one worthy of worship. So those are the two pillars of the Shahadatain. And Imam Fuzan, he goes on to bring some, some evidences from the Quran. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whoever disbelieves in Tagut, false deities, and believes in Allah, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold. So that shows us that we have to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. Alone, and he brings some other uh, ayat and, and verses. For example, uh, what Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam he said to his people. He said, "Innani bara'um mimma ta'budun illa ladi fatarini." Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Verily, I am innocent." That Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam said, "Verily, I am innocent of what you worship, except Him alone, who did create me." Huh? That's uh, talking about the worship of Allah subhanahu wa taala, knowing. Uh, acknowledging Rububiya and acting upon it by Tawheed al uluhiyah worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And all of these, there's so many uh, other verses and that illustrate this. And these are just some of the important things. In the next lesson, we'll talk about the shurut or the prerequisites or the conditions for the shahadatain. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.